All right, we think. I have to spray a little clear on it later. All right, so we there was somebody put a pipe in here. Anyway, I used one of these, and this obviously is not quite right, but we'll we'll deal with that later. Um, that line is good. I added a quick filter in there. There's no room for a full length unless I put it here, but I might replace the whole line. I got to get more line. We have the pet cock there. That's cool. All right. I used the correct bolts. I found the correct bolts. What was in here wasn't right. Um, I trimmed the hoses back down in here because they leak. Flushed the tank out because it was filthy. It had crap in it. All right. So now we're done here. Um, we got to get underneath. So I think I'm going to. Just sort of reach in there. I know you can't see anything in there, but I want to just put a little lube on the chain, a little lube and a few other things, and then we'll put it down. Uh, we've got to put the cover on, and we have this exhaust here, so I might give this a quick paint and see maybe if I can do that. We'll wipe it off. We'll see. Uh, but we're going to need to bolt this piece back on and maybe make something to... Uh, jack with in the future. So I think I'm done in here. We're going to get just going to get in here. There's uh, some wires that need to be tied back, and I'll show you that in a little bit. I, you don't really need to see that, but I'm just going to tie that back, and we'll figure out what we want to do with the exhaust. Uh, so let me go see what I want to do. Okay, I got to get an air cleaner. So that's another thing. Let me see what I can make. But. In the meantime, let me see what's going on because I might be able to make something. But I got to clean up what I have. I'm going to spray, spray the top down, get it nice. Okay, guys, pulled the tires off. I want to make sure I got the shafts clean and everything. I think one of them has a slow leak. So what I'm going to do is going to clean these off, wash them off, and then we're going to oil them. All right, because you get dry rot, and this one's starting to dry rot. So to try to hold on to it. All right, we're gonna we're gonna do that. So I'll be back in a bit. We're gonna just wash these off with a good detergent, like a heavy base, and uh, bring them in, and then we'll oil them. Okay, guys, it's getting late. I got everything cleaned up. This one had a little bit of a leak in it. We put some stop leak in, and I mixed up some used motor oil and some gasoline. We're gonna start putting that on the tires all the way around. I'm going to wipe it in, let it soak in, and we'll put the tires back on. Why? Well, it's an old farmer's trick, okay? Use motor oil. You can put it on straight, but it, it just won't soak in well. Use motor oil. They've been doing it for years on their tractor tires, and uh, this will help stabilize the rubber, and it's like nutrients. And the old motor oil is good. So in this small container, I put, I don't know, about that much oil and the rest gas okay and you could use caro or something else and we're going to wipe everything down when we're done and we'll see what it looks like okay guys <clears throat> all right let's soak for a minute i'll lube up the shafts and we'll put this back on okay so and this is good i mean the vehicle is gas and it's you know that's you could use a different vehicle it's just it's late and i'm getting tired but this will keep it from <clears throat> <clears throat> you know rotting more they're in good shape we have one with a little bit of a leak put some leak stop in it if we have to get some more leak stop in it fine if i have to slime it fine but we're going to just start here and uh so i'm going to put this stuff back together now we're doing a little bit of spray painting and a little cleaning up some adjustments all right <clears throat> see what i got so probably could put a little more paint on a few spots if I can reach it. So I might try to do that. All right. We'll be back in a bit. Let's see if if we if I can describe what's happening. So this is this is the wire coming from the magneto. Right? And it's and you're going to measure it. Basically it's a, it's basically at the point of ground for reference to this test. I won't get into why it really isn't, but, hey. So you have to remove it from the circuit in order to test. This is the wire coming from the ignition switch. All right, right now the ignition is off. Oh, excuse me, on, all right? And there's no beep. Listen, beep, okay. So, 
when I throw the blade switch, okay, here's the reason why you saw what you saw. So right now the blade is off, right? The clutch is off. Hear that? Okay. That's a problem. Regardless of all of the other interlocks, we're in neutral. This is the neutral safety switch. I'll show you. This is the neutral safety switch setup. And this is the seat switch. Somebody bypassed this. I don't know if that works yet, but I've got the neutral safety switch. She's in neutral. That's why when you go to the on position, you're, uh, the engine's allowed to run because you're not grounding the wire. Uh, and I'll back you up a little bit more. You're not grounding the wire over here. All right. So why is it that when you do when you throw that switch on the left over here, the blade switch, she grounds out the blade. That's why the engine's stalling. All right. It wasn't because I thought the engine wasn't running right because you could drive it around. So the engine was running well enough to do that without bogging down. In the, in the early part of the episode. So we do have something over here, and I'm going to take pull you off the stand. So hold on. It's going to get squirrely. All right, so there is a blade control switch over here. And I don't know what it goes to because there's nothing in there that I can see that it goes to. So I'm going to climb underneath there a little bit more, poke around. I'm looking at the diagram and I'm going to get a, make a jumper for that. We're going to make a jumper. We're going to jump that out and see what it does. Because I'm looking at the diagram, and it does go back to that wire on the magneto. It goes, it, it, part one, one is ground. Black is always ground in this. So the, one of these goes kind of back through the seat and all that. So I'm thinking that it needs to know something that I'm not giving it. It needs more information. And so it needs to complete something. And I don't know what that is. Um, I don't know what the blade switch is because I don't see it. You know, somebody's been in here. I don't know where the blade switch would mount. So let me get my head in here a little bit more. We'll try jumping that out just to prove out my logic. This way, while the tire is off. And there's nothing in here. I checked in here, Okay. Let me go in there and look a little bit more. We can't see anything. You can't. All right, so let me go try that. I'll be back in a bit. All right, so I, fi I figured it out. Um, okay, so here's what we got. All right. All right. So we're grounded because we're off. Engine off. Okay. Um, switch set to blade off. All right, and blade off, okay? Ignition on, okay? Now watch, okay? The solenoid's trying to start. It's just the battery's dead. All right, so when the switch is like this, with the if you put whenever you turn the bat in one direction, you probably can't see it, but I'm trying to get you in the whole shot. All right, these two contacts are made. There's nothing on this side, all right? But there is on this side. This black and black is ground, green wire is going over to the solenoid, allowing you to start the engine because the blade is off, all right? So you, you can only start the engine if you're sitting on the seat and the blade is off. But he's disconnected the seat switch. When you, when you turn the switch in the other direction, right, and I connect this white wire, right, you get that beep, okay, and we want to leave it there because it's pulling the solenoid in and it's not moving, and you get that beep because this white wire with the yellow stripe comes up over into here, into the neutral circuit, and goes over here, and it's supposed to be going through this switch, so the switch on the seat, we need to check the seat, the seat switch, because if the seat switch doesn't work, you can't connect that wire. And that's where the guy went wrong. Why? Because if you get off the seat and that switch goes, what it does is it grounds. When the seat gets raised up, it's grounding the engine, causing it to stop. So if you fall off the machine, 
or you get off the machine and that blade switch is on and the blade is running, it's going to ground the motor. If the blade isn't running, okay, you don't have the blade switch set to on, you can start the machine, you don't have to be sitting on it. Interesting enough, I believe so. So what we need to do is we need to check this switch here. Now, that's the next thing we need to do. So, it looks like he's got a connector over here. The end, the end of the connector he taped to the end of this. So what we need to do is kind of put this down on the ground. And we need to see what's going on with this. So, let's get this wire off. Let's just test to make sure. All right, working. So with the seat up, power is passed through the seat or through the seat switch or ground to these wires here, and then it kills the motor. Now we don't know if the switch is working if and when you sit down on it. Okay, that might be a precious switch here. So the only way we're going to know that, unfortunately, is we have to make up a rig for these test purposes. And I don't know if I can reach in here and get to it. Maybe there's enough slack in it. Seat down, all right? So I can kind of get over here. I don't know if it's just a uh, a level switch. Unfortunately, I'm not level right now. I may have to lower the machine. Or is it a pressure switch? So I can kind of get in here a little bit. But, oh. Worst case is, is I wire it and test it, all right? Because we could just wire it fast. Okay, so she's grounded right now. So I don't know if it's a pressure switch or not. I don't think, so. I don't think it is, it might be. It's a pressure switch. It seems to be working. Okay. All right. So let's wire it up. All right, guys. Let me fix that switch, and we'll test. All right. Shut it to off, and we'll test again. Let me wire it up. Guy made a mistake. He screwed it up. All right. So we'll figure it out. We're almost there. Now what I want to do now, I just want to trim away some of the nonsense that's in here so I can get to the wire a little bit more. And I'll show you what I want to do. And let's get a, uh, a piece of heat shrink for this. All right, I got the, I got the small heat shrink. I'm just going to go get a slightly bigger heat shrink and I'm going to show you how I like to wire up stuff like this if you can see it I can't zoom in so let's trim it I don't want to make them any shorter now let's put our heat shrink smaller heat shrink tubes down get them down here and then what we're going to do is we're going to now this is this is like white yellow stripe and this is white yellow stripe and I'm not sure why this is a little different so I'll just make sure this plugs in the guy fortunately saved the switch connector which is just great that he did that so it doesn't really matter which one I think this is the right one here so what we want to do is just splay these out a little bit we're going to do a butt style. Untwist them a little. It's kind of a messy joint, but we don't have enough room to do a full twist. So you're going to have to try to just work with what's here and then trim it. And if we can, a lot of times you can't. You know, it's hard. We may have to do a twist and bend over. I like, uh, I have a pair of small. Lineman's friend used to give me a hard time because you need the big pair. I was like, I have the big pair. 
you don't want a big pair for for this and if, we, if you can splay these out more sometimes but unfortunately this is a, a big gauge wire everything in here is big 16 and larger it's not it's not just control wiring let's see can we do that I don't think I can I can't get it tight enough probably yeah, I think I got it. All right, so there's one. All right, so now what you want to do, take your acid flux, take your flux, put a little bit on your Q-tip or something. I can drip it. Try to get it on there. Best you can. And then tin your, your soldering iron. Wipe it on. For those of you that don't know, wipe it on a sponge. I have a sponge over here. It's today's sponge, or actually it's so old it's been many yesterdays. Tin it up, and then because it's old, older wiring, it's dirty, I got to use a little flux. That's it. All right, let it cool. Go to the next one. Okay, give it a minute, let it cool off, and then we'll twist up the next one, and when I'm done, I'll pull the sleeves up, and we'll solder, I mean, uh, heat shrink, see, this one's pretty dirty, so I'll wipe it off a little bit, it's just, it's just some basic grease, it's nothing bad, splay this one out a little bit more. Same procedure. And then we'll pull the heat shrink over it. And a lot of times if you get one, it, the, the one helps hold the other in place. So try to twist it however you can. That's probably about as good as I'm going to get it. Get that acid on it again. You don't need a lot. You're going to have, sometimes you'll have some wires that, you know, you might have to clean up little strays. Let's put a little more acid on. No, it's, it, you cut it a little too close. See, I'm actually making it worse. That's it. All right. <sighs> the wires down a little bit we'll get those we'll trim those and again on the sponge I don't know if you can see it but I can't see what you see I don't have good camera gear I can't afford nice things my bills are too high divorce and you don't make a lot of money doing this if you're not over, you know charging street price It's having a little bit of a harder time. Here it goes. Just because it was a little dirty, you got to give the acid a bit of time. To, that's perfect. All right, let me disconnect my soldering, my smoldering iron, and start putting some of this stuff away. And I'm going to get out my blow dryer, my heat gun. I'm just going to put my soldering iron to the side for a little bit. I'll be back in a bit, guys. We're going to pull it up. We're going to dress it out the rest of the way, and then we can test. All right, I just cleaned them up a little bit. Use a little alcohol. Uh, I use a little bit of lacquer thinner, which it has alcohol and all this stuff in it. A rag. You don't want to leave the acid on it. You want to get the junk off. Okay. We're just going to crimp it down a little, just so that the pieces aren't hanging so much. Okay, now we'll dress this over, and we'll heat shrink. Be back in a bit. The Raychem, really great company. Got this from Grumman. This heat gun, I love it.
Alright, let this cool. Once we're done heating it. Put it on for a minute. All right, give it a minute, because if you try to put the heat shrink, the other heat shrink piece on now, it'll start shrinking on you. Let it cool a little bit. All right, there you go. And that's it, all right? Now, that should be more than enough. It's up a little bit. We want to just protect as much of the water. You could have made it longer, but that's all right. All right, so let me shrink this down, and... Then we'll connect it. We'll put my stuff away. Right, let's pull it. Okay, guys. Let me put my stuff away. And then we're going to test it, all right? Now, I don't know if I should sit on this or not. I don't think it's a good idea, but we'll test it. All right, let's retest. All right, let's do a test. So, ignition switch is off. It's beeping. The engine's off. Let's turn it on. All right, so we have no continuity. In other words, it's not grounding out the magneto, all right? And the switch right now is in this position so this the blade is off all right and I disconnected the white wire to the seat now what you're gonna see we're gonna leave it off for a minute now you should be able to start it okay and you can tell here now let's say it's running we put the okay I heard it click all right now that's what should happen. Now watch this. Okay. There's the seat switch. Okay. So we're good to go. So let's tighten this up. Let's put everything back. That needs to go back. We're okay. I can make a little jumper. Um, so that I can service this thing without sitting on it. We'll do that in a little bit. And then I'll go back to doing all the other stuff, and we can mount we can mount the switch to the console, um, so we can finish up uh, that part. And then I can move to other things. The the blade control switch on the passenger side, on the right side, I guess you'd say, as you were sitting in the lawnmower, that's dangling. All right, that doesn't do anything um, on this model because. There is no blade switch or anything in that area. I, I can't tell you if the guy took it off, but it doesn't do anything on this model. I looked at the two diagrams. They have a diagram for electric start and a diagram for non-electric start. And we're kind of more like the non-electric start, all right? Uh, so that's the setup on this. This still, you, got, you still have two, sa two major safeties here. And that's what I wanted. I want those safeties in place, okay? So we have the safeties that we need. We don't need a blade to determine if the blade is spinning or not. I don't even know what the hell that is. All right, we'll be back in a bit. I'm finding that these crimps pulled off. Two reasons. One, the cheapy tools that you get for crimping suck. And also, these are the, they're not the mill grade, mill spec grade uh, crimp-ons. So... What I do, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to recrimp some of these, check them all, and I'm going to use my tool. We used to have these tools sent out to be calibrated or for Grumman, because uh, they need to be. And, and it, so this is this is really the right tool, and it makes a, an excellent excellent crimp. I just sprayed the deck a little bit. I cleaned it off. Uh, some detergents and brake cleaner. I'm spraying things with Chevy Orange because I don't have anything else. I don't know if we can bend this back. I don't think so. Right? That would require a lot of force. Uh, I don't want to make a mess of it. 
I'm not gonna do it with a hand seamer. Might be able to do it with a vice grip. Yeah. When they get bent like that, it's pretty bad. This is heavy material. So, you know, sometimes you can work it a little bit at a time and get some of it restored. Yeah, that's coming up a little bit. All right, that's a big down chia. And then we'll just spray it on the, on the edge, blend it in. Yeah, it's pinched. It's pinched good. But it's okay. Yeah, somebody hit something hard. Yeah, I know. We gotta look at the back cover and the front cover, too. But, I know it doesn't look great, but it'll... It'll prevent it from rusting, which will make it, that'll make it look like shit. Not a perfect match, doesn't have to be. Put a little clear on it too. And when I get a chance, I'll, I'll see if I can order the right paint for it. That's good. Yeah, that's good. All right, because we also want to get up in there all of the joints we want to lubricate. Some of them don't have much in the way of like a grease fitting, so you're just going to have to take, fill up some uh, used motor oil and my squirt gun. And we'll go to town once I once I take care of a few other things. Well, I think this looks good though. You know, you're just trying to give it a chance to dry while it's here in the shop. All right, guys, we'll be back in a bit. I'll get in here with some rust saver or something. Brush that in. Clean that off another day. And it's really just to kind of, as I'm working. So I'm going to look to pull the tires off now. I'm going to clean them off. And we're going to oil them. And then we'll set them aside. Uh, just so you can see what that looks like. This is, these are the tires from yesterday. So they look real good. They look really good. All right. And it soaks in. It doesn't evaporate because it soaks in. So one coating is all you need. One good coating is what I made. And we're happy. Let's see what we got. So it was, there's a roll pin that holds this on. So we don't want to, we don't want to disrupt that. No reason to. So I'm just gonna, this bottle's almost dead. You know, every time I put chemicals like this or gas or whatever, I have to order some really nice chemical ready spray bottle. So I'm going to sit down, I'm going to go over this, and then we'll get through these, and then we'll start the lubrication underneath the chassis, and, uh, and we'll be done in a bit. All right, they look good. All right, I'm going to take a break now. Um, go take a break, we'll come back, I'll lube the under chassis, and I'll work on my way up towards the top and the pinion and all that, and then we'll put start putting things back on. But she looks real good, and it's clean. we got to lube you know, the tires, you have grease fittings on that. And again, like the other ones, they'll soak in and we'll have, it's a good way to kind of stave off time a little bit. It's really all you can do is you're hoping to buy time, you know, adding the material back into the rubber and it'll fight off oxidation and junk. And it's a one time kind of clean like this, you know, I mean, I'll use the pressure washer and the hose periodically, but this is like a one time. So refurb, right? You refurb it, you go over it, you do the, do a decent job, do the best you can to get it cleaned up and you have yourself a nice machine. Or as a, for a customer, if, you know, to make this thing work, let's say I want to sell it, all right? I've gone over the whole machine and I can ask a decent buck for this machine. So we'll be back in a little bit. All right, I got to get into the break. I got to get in there, all right? I don't think you're going to be able to see. So... We'll see what it, usually if you just take it apart and clean it and then recheck it, it's usually okay. So let me see if I can get in there. 
Okay, it's really greasy in there, inside that cavity there, that box. And everything was just full of oil. So it could be leaking oil a little bit. We're gonna lube that shaft with some of my uh, gasoline and, you know, with emollients. I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna get it degreased. And we're only gonna apply, you know, grease where it needs to be. Oh, these things are just absolutely covered in oil. So we've got to get these things cleaned up. They were all washed out. Maybe somebody oiled it. There's a lot of oil on it. You know, because my brakes were squeaking. I remember a kid did that in high school. He asked, we were in the auto show, he says, what could you do because my brakes are squeaking? I said, well, you know, we all told him we got to lubricate it properly. Then he put grease all over everything. He wound up on his neighbor's front porch. Thank God nobody got hurt. But the brake pads are in good shape. Everything's in good shape, so let's get, these are in good shape, All right? We're gonna re-lube them, but we're gonna get everything super clean. So I'm gonna go bring this over to the, my bench and wash it well, and then we'll put it back together again with only grease in the right spots. But it's not frozen. A lot of times they're frozen in here. But this lives protected so it doesn't get wet and full of grass and everything. But that's actually a nice design. All right, we'll be right back. We're going to go do that. There's nothing to, nothing to do, really. There's nothing to restore, just clean. All right. I scuffed up the disc. Uh, you can use Scotch-Brite. I used a combination of Scotch-Brite and a nice crocus cloth. And then after washing it, I rewashed it, just wiped it again with some lacquer thinner. And let's do the same thing. That doesn't have, that can just be cleaned. And these I cleaned and I just scotch brighted them a little bit because there's a little, there's always a little bit of rust on the side that doesn't really see, uh, live in the pocket. Now these, these are the brake shoes. There's two of them, they're in great shape. Let's just give them another rinse with lacquer thinner this time because we want them to be clean and dry and oil free. And the lacquer thinner will help evaporate out any garbage. Now these you can scuff up too, but this we don't have to. You can actually scuff them up. Because um, it'll remove debris. Let's see. You can take it. You need to put it on. You really need to put it on something that's flat, but it could just go like that, if you can see it, on your paper, and then wipe them again. And because they're mostly made out of metal, but the metal has a tendency to grab all the junk. Just want to knock off any of the junk. You can see they're brighter. Now there's no oil. Yeah, you can feel it. And this guy, we're gonna just blow this out real quick. Just grab, because we don't mind a little bit of oil on it. The way it works is we're gonna take, we're gonna use bearing grease, okay? Very little. And you could take a cute because you can control the Q-tip a little bit better. And get a bunch of grease. Let's see if the Q-tip helps us. We just want to put the grease in here. And you don't need much. And the way it went originally was, I don't know, sometimes you can see, yeah, see, that's the outside. I could see a little bit of staining. Now what you can do is put a little bit more grease in that to help hold it. That's good. 
and then we'll, we'll remove any excess. And you can have a little bit of grease on the tips too. And then this goes in, which is a spreader plate. So you can have grease behind the spreader plate. And you can even have a little bit of grease on the sides, but you don't want grease everywhere because it, it'll get on the shoe. So you could take your Q-tip now that you've got it where you want it and just go in there. And just remove anything that might get on the shoe. Okay, done. Now when we go to put it together again, all right, so you got one loaded. We'll get the other one loaded in. Now we're going to go put it together. Let's see if you can see it. Now, you can see it move. If you tighten it too much, it won't move at all. So, but it's moving. So we're, the only way we're going to be able to test it now is, you know, after I get it running and we try driving it. All right, so that's enough for now. Let me get the wheels on. Let me get this thing down on the ground and get the wheels on. Check it out. Decided to sharpen the blade because we're not going to do this again. This thing's in great shape. I mean, there's so little wear on this blade, but you know, might as well sharpen it. Uh, you know, this is a great, you know, $100 I paid for this thing, and my buddy Mikey set me up. Thanks, Mike! And, uh, and he brought it here along with the other one and a whole bunch of other stuff which I bought from him. So I spent a lot more than $100, but. Take care. I try. We try to take care of each other. But uh, yeah, let me go sharpen that up, and uh, I'll put it back up. Remember, I'm gonna put. Don't forget, you gotta put some anti seize on the bolt. So I'll do that. Then I'll check the front tires, make sure they're aired, and if they need anything, I'll put it in. Stop leak or whatever, and then we can start putting this thing back down. All right, guys. Let's see. So I got fuel on it. Everything else is ready to, to at least for the test. I jumped out the seat switch safety. We have it set to blade set to off. All right. So engine's off. So if we try to turn it on, okay, it will want it will want to start. Okay, because we can feel we can hear it pulling in. The solenoid's trying to pull in. I'm not seeing any leaking coming out yet. We have it in full choke. Um, we should be ready to start. So let's give it a run, and let's just see what happens. I'm going to pull it. Hopefully, I have enough room here to pull. Yeah, it wants to fire. Now, I checked out a few things. So, sequence of operations is, you know, we got it running. It used to be the one and a half, by the way, the one and a half turns on the carburetor. That was, it, it really doesn't get any better than that. I opened it up a little bit more on the idle, and it was fine. And we don't really know on the high end yet until I start driving it around. So, sequence of operations. We need to disconnect. We need to jump this out for the seat switch. And then we will get it started. Right? Once it's running, we disconnect that, we pull that jumper out, and then you should be able to throw the blade on because that's going to simulate uh, the seat being down and somebody sitting on it, right? Because it's normally closed. So if it's a normally closed switch, it will kill the engine when I throw that blade switch on if I leave it like that. So this is the sequence. You have to have it normally clo uh, closed um, at least to start it, okay? So let's give it a shot. <clears throat> Turn it on. It will not um, will not start because it's not enough battery juice. Now there's a 
one last thing to try is that once it's running, we want to disconnect the battery. It should still run, but we want to see if we can still throw the blade, all right, uh, and turn the blade on if, if, the, if this will power it. All right, so let's give it a shot. Okay, let's, let's get it started. The carb's not leaking. It's on. And it should just start. It should be warm enough to start. Let's see, it shouldn't need to primer or anything. Just put it to mid range. Mid -range. can't make enough power um, to run the blade just on the engine itself so that's something we're gonna have to look into so uh, another thing too is I I don't know which one of these I got to jack it back up again because I'm missing I found a, uh, a spacer so it was outside I didn't see it I don't know why I didn't see it so I got to jack it back up and check the tires and see which one's moving so what we need to do is we need to get it a battery, but for now we'll use this battery. We're just going to have to mount it somehow. I don't know how you would do that. Uh, but other than that, let's, uh, let's call it on this one. This one's beautiful. Okay. All right. Last look. I just want to do a little walk around. I just did a little bit more cleaning up. I had to make an adjustment in the back. A few little things. All right, let's put it down, and I'm going to move to the next project. All right, another thing I did here, this tag, I tried to put it down and glue it, re-glue it, and I had to write on it, because you can't see everything. I think the serial number is still kind of visible. I wrote it down anyway. Uh, so just, you know, anything I could do to... The thing I'd like to do is maybe put a piece of rubber in there or something, because you hear it, it makes a racket. You know, even if you just turn a lid and shove it in there and, you know, get it stuck in there somehow. Anything. I'm trying to let it down with my jack. I put the back on. And we'll get another shot of it running again. It, I got to order a battery next. Well, I still need to... Oh, you know what? I want to do one more thing before I take the jack away. I noticed the blade, like I mentioned, it, the blade seems like it might be out of balance. Even though it's in mint shape, it does seem like it balances up. When it's spinning at the highest RPM, I'm going to just look into that. I think I'm going to check the balance on it. All right, so we'll be back. Okay, guys. So 
So other than that, this is in the way, but you can see. All right, I thought it was just a little off, and it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark an H on this side so I don't forget, and we're going to take a little more material off that side and rehang it. And any spot that you can just put a nail on the wall. There's a couple of different balancers that you can use. Uh, this way is pretty good. This is a pretty long blade. So with a longer blade, it's going to be more important. All right. With some of the like uh, tractor lawn mowers that have two smaller blades, a lot of times that's not so bad. Well, we're going to we're going to try and fix this. We'll be back as close as you're going to get it. All right. Any more than that, you're chasing, you're chasing a ghost because this isn't a tie tech setup. But that's good enough. We're going to put it on now and uh, call it a day. All right? That's why it's a good idea to clean your blades good. Clean them. Get all the junk off. Sharpen them. Then at least do this much. All right? Especially if you see that the blade has wear on it and you had to take quite a bit off. All right? I'll be back. Okay, last look guys, last look, runs good, just cut the lawn and it seems to be fine, although it did shut off fooling around trying to get into reverse, you know, the, I think I, you know, it, it could be the tranny's a little sticky on the neutral safety switch, but uh, safeties are working, everything else is going, and pretty happy the blade is working, um, the only thing I don't, it doesn't really have is a side discharge with this mount over here that I just put a coffee can on for now. So it really needs it. Uh, this time of year when the grass is super high because it'll jam up, but we can deal with those issues later. Anyway, uh, pretty happy whether I sell it or keep it. They've got a nice machine. And next up, we'll, hopefully we'll do this one real soon. So thanks for watching Archer's Garage and I'll see you guys in the next one.